back in year eight, when our biggest worries were, what are we going to watch on television that evening? I was walking around with my friends after school. Everyone was having a good time, joking, laughing, just doing what kids do best. We decided to go and play football, but we needed to buy a ball first. So we ended up going down to Sports Direct. As we were about to enter the store, we found our way was blocked by the security guard with his arms stretched out wide. However, he wasn't like this before. So we asked him, sorry, are we not allowed in? And he replied with a stern, no. Still puzzled, we continued to ask him, oh, why are we allowed in? And he replied with three simple words, no Jews allowed. No Jews allowed. Back then, I couldn't understand what had happened or the significance of this. However, since I've aged, the reality had set in that because I'm Jewish, I and so many other people won't be treated the same as everyone else. This security guard saw my religious head covering and he decided not to allow me in. He decided to treat us differently. I'm not ashamed to wear my religious head covering in public, but so many others are full of worry and nerves that something might happen. Dirty looks being cast their way or sadly, even worse. What is the point of this? This is the question. What's the point? The point is, I and so many others are unable to be themselves in public because of the way we are born. The fact that I am Jewish should not determine what I can or cannot do, nor should it impact people's attitudes before getting to know a person. Unfortunately, this is the reality that so many people have to cope with. This is not a lecture, nor is it a seminar. It is simply a chance to demonstrate the huge problem that is anti-Semitism and why it's imperative that we stop this here and now. Anti-Semitism has and is on the rise around the world, and when looking closer at the UK, it's sadly no different. The anti-Semitic incidents reported around the UK has increased for the fourth year in a row, reaching an all-time high. Another reason why I know so many that live in fear and terror is because the London Borough of Barnet, which has the largest Jewish population of any UK borough, has had the highest number of incidents, amounting to 18% of the national total. Any guesses where I live? If you guess the London Borough of Barnet, well done. I live in the area which has the most inc incidents take place. Can you imagine how frightening that must be? Put yourself in a situation where you'd be worried to leave the house simply because the colour of your skin or your gender or anything that makes you different. In a place and a time where everyone is trying to be the same and achieve the same goals, we should embrace and celebrate our differences, not hide them away. The problem of anti-Semitism is everywhere, even if you don't notice. That is why I have a duty to share this with you, opening your eyes to see what truly occurs. I admit it's impossible to know all the issues and hatred that is being spread. So not even a year ago, we saw the tragic death and ill treatment of George Floyd and so many others. Polls in the summer of 2020 estimated that between 15 and 26 million people had participated in a demonstration for the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States, making the protest the largest in US history. This is such a simple and amazing display of the strength in numbers. The, pe the power of the people's voice is the greatest opportunity we have to share these issues. We should continue using this power in the battle against other issues we see around the globe. I strongly believe a key issue is that so many people remain uneducated in the problem that is anti-Semitism. Our news stories have been so occupied with Brexit and coronavirus that we miss out on the stories of hate and violence around the UK. The Jewish Virtual Library estimated a Jewish population of 291,000 in 2020, making Britain's Jewish community the fifth largest in the world. This equates to only 0.43% of the population of the United Kingdom. Such a minute percentage, yet there is so much hatred and cruelty towards them while all being swept under the carpet. In order to combat this problem, we must include opportunities within our education system to learn about the other people's beliefs and religions. This will give people a clearer, more truthful picture and close the idea to stereotypes and hatred. In doing so, we promote a peaceful and friendly attitude, being diff bringing different communities closer together and forming a bond of unity. Issues such as racism, feminism and recently mental health have all been brought to the fore and discussed. People clearly know about these issues and are constantly deliberated upon. Anti-Semitism is not one of these debates. It is left out, not because it isn't a serious matter, but simply because people are unaware how prevalent it is through our society. Again, this must change. As a Jewish person, my eyes are always open to the issue, and it's shocking to see how often it occurs in the street, social media sites, in sports, and many other places. I myself am a proud Evertonian. I love to watch football. It provides an escape from the pressures and stresses of work and worries. However, something so basic as a game of football can be ruined and tarnished by hatred. Chelsea FC announced it was opening an investigation 
following the discovery of a video made by fans performing Nazi salutes, singing anti-Semitic songs, and mimicking the noise of a gas chamber during a match. If anyone can see the relevance this has to football, please feel free to speak up. Not only does this have no place in football, but it has no place in society. The issue of anti-Semitism doesn't stop here. It can be seen in all aspects of life, and arguably most worrying the fact that it's seen within the four walls of the Houses of Parliament. The people we elect, the people who supposedly know what's best, the people in charge of how our country functions. February 2019 saw the defection of several Labour MPs to the newly formed independent group, some of whom cited anger over the party's response to allegations of anti-Semitism as their reasons for leaving. The Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has been the main highlight of allegations. In a television interview with Andrew Neil, the Labour leader refused to give an apology on four separate occasions, many cases of anti-Semitism within his party. The former Lord Chancellor said there has been a failure of leadership by the party, with 130 anti-Semitism inquiries still incomplete and hundreds, maybe thousands more cases that should be investigated. The UK, a place where it prides itself on democracy, inclusivity, acceptance and safety, yet when looking towards its leaders, the opposite can be seen. It is almost as if we are discussing different countries. It is not acceptable and will not be tolerated. It is time to take a stand. In a protest over anti-Semitism within the Labour Party, many signs could read such as Labour for the many, not for the Jew. As well as 39% of Britons overall believing that Corbyn is anti-Semitic, if you look within the Jewish community, that stat reaches 87%. As a white cis male, I have no right to tell black people what is racist. I cannot tell a woman what they deem to be sexist, and I cannot tell a trans person what they deem to be transphobic. Therefore, someone that is not of the Jewish faith has no right to decide what is anti-Semitic to a Jewish person. The new Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, has said that Corbyn's remarks have undermined the Labour Party's work in restoring trust within the Jewish community and looks to block his return to the House of Commons under a Labour seat. Of course, this is a step in the right direction, and Starmer's apology is hopefully the beginning of a change within the Labour Party in the UK. However, the issue spreads further than this, and more needs to be done to combat the problem of anti-Semitism. A few years ago, I was walking along the streets of London. I had my earphones in, so I was not completely aware to my surroundings, but I felt something small hit me. I turned around to see what it was, and I saw a group of young adults throwing 20 pence pieces at me and shouting, watch him pick him up. No one stopped them. No one asked if I was OK, nor did anyone explain to them what they were doing is wrong. To make the, situa to make the situation even worse is that no more than 30 metres up the road, there was a homeless gentleman who was cold and hungry. These people, so full of hate, would rather use their money for evil instead of helping someone that needs it. I wish to leave you on one final story of mine. When I was interrailing with my mates in Budapest, a person with a swastika and an SS eagle tattoo approached us and told us to get out of his country. He said he does not like Jews and we're getting our dirty Jew DNA in their water. The reason for sharing this story is with you is because this was a turning point of mine. I realised that many people, either due to ignorance or lack of education, believe lies and stereotypes, which leads to the spread of animosity and crime. A key teaching within Judaism is the phrase, this translates to treat your neighbour as you wish to be treated. As much as we all love Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, this provides a platform for people to spread hate and cower behind the screen. People believe that if you can't see the person, it becomes acceptable. This couldn't be further from the truth. Anti-Semitism is not a Jewish problem, but a world problem. It encourages a world of hate and violence instead of full of love and kindness. Which would you rather be a part of? I know what I would. The purpose of this conversation with you was to draw your attention to the ongoing issue of anti-Semitism and show you that no more needs to be done to stop it. Before I leave, I want to take this opportunity to thank the professors for allowing me to share with you. But more importantly, I want to thank those of you that are going to take an active role in correcting this problem. Next time you see a comment that is anti-Semitic online, reply and say it's wrong. Next time you hear someone hurl an abusive comment at someone, take a stand and defend the innocent. Next time you see someone share a post about how to stop anti-Semitism and correct the issue, share it as well. It takes two seconds and it can do the world of difference. I implore you, take a stand, bring attention to these issues and help educate others. The only way to fight hate is with love. Thank you.